I should go as Miles. Figure out what's going on at Feast. Hey, Genki. I'm gonna talk to Gloria about Feast. As me, not Spider-Man. Undercover by not being undercover. I like it. I call that unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome back, True Believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very exciting Marvel Spider-Man 2 related video. Once again, having another laid-back discussion and collaboration pertaining to a very intriguing subject revolving around the game. Today, I am joined by the one, the only, the amazing News to Astonish, who if you don't know is another amazing content creator on YouTube who does a plethora of awesome Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos, which I highly suggest that you go and check out for yourselves, and I will leave all of his links in the description below so you can support him as much as you can. And today we are going to have a very intriguing talk about what exactly we hope and what we can expect Insomniac to do for both Peter and Miles outside of them being Spider-Man, revolving around the story and the gameplay. Ronnie, what's up, dude? How you doing today? It's really great to be on here, man. I, I, I love doing collab videos with you, but thank you for having me, man. Uh, I'm doing really well. So both within Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales, there was a lot of sequences within the game's story, which had you directly play as both Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and even Mary Jane Watson, without being able to use superpowers. And because of that, it really allowed you as the player to connect even more thoroughly with all the main protagonists that each game had. Specifically in the case for our main man, Peter Parker, there were a lot of sequences in Spider-Man PS4 where you were either simply working on the mechanical arms at Otto's lab, walking around the fee shelter and talking to Aunt May and all the other homeless people. And of course, there were the other controversial missions that some people deemed to be a bit irritating within the first game, of course, relating to Mary Jane Watson and Miles Morales. More so Mary Jane than Miles, since there were a lot of times where people thought it slowed the pace down of the game. But for the most part, in my opinion, I did really enjoy each of those missions where it allowed you to see this superhero-filled world that Insomniac created from a more human perspective and explore areas that maybe Spider-Man wouldn't necessarily go and walk around like Grand Central Station or Norman's Penthouse or the City Hall Explosion like what you did with Miles Morales as well as trying to hide away from Rhino which I really really enjoyed. And because of those missions having a lot more detailed exposure to characters like Miles and Peter and MJ it really gives you a more impactful sense of the duality that each of the characters have with their connection to Spider-Man. As Stan said, what Marvel does is put the human in the superhuman. Mm -hmm. So like us, we learn from our experiences. Yeah. Hopefully we grow, we learn from them, we get better, and we just wanted to think, we're always thinking, what would Peter do? What would Peter do? And put ourselves in his wall crawling shoes. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about the story, telling the story of the man behind the mask. Like yeah. to us, Peter's as important as the Spider-Man character. We really want to make sure that, and I think that's what whether it's the comics, the you know the you know animation, whether it's live action, like they're always telling it's more than just about the guy in the suit or the woman in the suit. It's, we want to tell it's the person. It's the person. It's the person again, a very human story. So with all these inclusions, giving more depth to the story that Insomniac was able to tell for both Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales it really leaves us questioning exactly what they can do in the future, mainly of course pertaining to Marvel's Spider-Man 2, to see exactly what they can do to update and or innovate these mechanics going forward when controlling both Peter and Miles outside of them being Spider-Man. So Ronnie, what do you think that Insomnia could potentially do to expand upon what they've already set forth in their previous Spider-Man games? So I was thinking that Insomnia games can allow a more freedom uh, to both Spider-Men, you know, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales, but by having actually given the option to these characters to go out of their costume and into their civvies, perhaps uh, when, like you mentioned before, uh, being able to actually go back to your apartment and, you know, check to see if there's any missions or any mundane tasks that somebody would do when they need to go back to their place. In this case, it'll be Aunt May's house, you know, where Peter is now residing. Um, just being able to go there uh, just to run some errands. Um, I want to be able to experience that kind of duality. And I think uh, exploring the, the human aspect of it, you know, that being Peter Parker, a struggling man who has you know a hard time paying his mortgage uh relationship problems and whatnot even though him and mary jane are, are back in good terms 
I, I want to be able to expand upon that and explore a little bit more of the human element in the sequel. And the same goes for Miles. I mean, I wanted to be able to go back to his mom's house and, you know, interact with other characters besides always interacting with other characters as Spider-Man. So I think with the new PlayStation 5, with the hardware and everything, I think all of that's going to be possible, including other things such as, you know, you know, this is a, a side tangent, but I want to be able to also explore other avenues in the city. I want to be able to have a bigger map and just all of that needs to be implemented in the sequel. One element that I've wanted and I've been really curious about is if Insomnia Games is gonna go ahead and tackle on the quick change element. And to elaborate a little bit further on that, I'm wondering if Insomnia Games is gonna allow the player to actually change into Peter Parker or Miles Morales whenever they feel like it or whenever they need to. Because not even a person that plays as a superhero character doesn't always wanna be the superhero. They wanna explore other avenues about the person. So there's, again, the superhero element, but I wanna be able to explore the person element. So I wanna be able to actually go, you know, be free and let's say go into an alley. Now, this was an idea that was brought up to me in one of my videos in the comments section, and I can't remember who it was, and I apologize if I'm forgetting your name. Somebody brought up the idea of going into an alley and being able to change into Peter Parker and vice versa, change it to Spider-Man whenever you want. So I feel like in the first game, due to whatever reason, it could be the hardware limitations or whatnot, you were limited to only being Spider-Man when it was required and you didn't have as much freedom. It is a wonderful game and I love Spider-Man and I play it still to this very day. But exploring that kind of avenue, giving that much freedom will make you feel much more like Spider-Man if given the opportunity to do that kind of quick change. And also another element I want them to introduce is being able to interchange between Sp Spider-Man, Peter Parker and Miles Morales while you're in combat. And I did a video on this where I brought up an idea where they can introduce a combat feature that I like to call duo combat. And what I mean by that is that you could be in the middle of a fight as either Miles Morales or Peter Parker, and you press a combination of buttons and one of them comes out of nowhere to assist or perhaps take over the fight or complete a duo takedown. I think those will make the game that much better and it'll seem like the superior Spider-Man game, pun intended. Back to you, Evan. So now moving on more from the gameplay is of course to the story, where primarily for the duration of Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales, and now presumably for Marvel Spider-Man 2, you obviously played a lot as Peter and Miles, connecting with other characters within their own life. Whether or not that means that they were talking to them as Spider-Man in the suit or outside of being Spider-Man and talking to people more on a personal level, especially for a character like Peter Parker, who we played through the entirety of the time in Spider-Man PS4 with characters like Otto Octavius in his laboratory or Aunt May or Martin Lee in the fee shelter. But since Otto Octavius is no longer working in his lab since he became Dr. Octopus, it leaves us questioning exactly where Peter could be working now within Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Well, if you did pay attention in Miles Morales, it is heavily implied which is something that I've been waiting to see in the Spider-Man story for quite some time, is seeing Peter actually become a teacher for his main occupation. I need to find a job. Freelancing with the Bugle was great, but I'd like something steady. Have you thought about teaching? You're pretty good at it. <laughs> Honestly, no. No. Maybe. I'll think about it. Call you soon. Now this is something for me personally which I am heavily invested in and extremely excited for as someone who does thoroughly enjoy all the sequences from the past games where you are able to take a step outside of the Spider-Man suit and simply walk around and play as either Peter or Miles and of course also Mary Jane in the first game as well. And because of Peter's job as Otto's assistant in Spider-Man PS4, it really allowed that relationship between Otto and Peter to be even more fleshed out and have that emotional impact weigh even harder onto you by the time you ended up completing the game. But now since Otto is likely not going to be one of the main antagonists of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, same goes for characters like Finn who is of course Miles' best friend in his own game, 
it leaves us guessing as to what they could do to fill the void outside of being Spider-Man when going back to play as mild-mannered Peter Parker or the much more exaggerated swagger of Miles Morales. And this is where the occupation of Peter being a teacher is really going to be something extremely exciting to see for those of you like myself who are deeply invested in Peter's narrative and seeing exactly where he can go in the future of Insomniac's Spider-Man universe. Since Peter has been mentoring Miles for quite some time now, ever since Miles' own game, and presumably when a time jump occurs for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, it is going to be very intriguing to see exactly where Peter and Miles will be placed within their own lives for the point at which the story occurs, but also seeing how their characters can further develop by the time they encounter other villains and when they team up with each other as Spider-Man. And knowing that there were a lot of really intimate scenes between Peter and Mary Jane, as well as Peter and Aunt May, and even Miles with his mom and Finn and Genki, really made the story pop even more than it already did because of how invested we were with all those characters. So having the benefit of Peter become a teacher for his main job will hopefully allow him to have a closer eye on Miles if he ends up teaching at the same school Miles attends. And in his spare time, he could try and make sure that he's still doing good in school while also checking up on his own Spider-Man endeavors. While it is extremely fun to play as Spider-Man and swing around New York City, it is nice to have some downtime by being able to just simply experience what Peter and Miles would in their own personal lives. So having that freedom to possibly explore a school campus as Peter while he is a teacher or even a teacher's assistant, or even be Miles as a student to check up on other classmates, would be an insanely intuitive way to completely incorporate the full-on duality that both Peter and Miles are experiencing within their own personas, as well as being Spider-Man at the same time. And the last item to discuss pertaining to the duality between Peter, Spider-Man, and even Miles as Spider-Man, is of course who they're going to go up against within the game's story. Now, obviously, Spider-Man PS4 spent a lot of time building up the rise and fall of Otto Octavius becoming Dr. Octopus because of all those moments working with him in the laboratory. And while we didn't get the same amount of in-depth connection with Miles and Finn in his own game, there were still some very intriguing moments like the flashback sequence or even the Christmas dinner where you do get to connect with Finn on a much more personal level in order to sympathize with the antagonist, which really made for some very emotional moments for both games. And now, seeing that we are clearly dealing with one of, if not the most famous Spider-Man foes of all time with Venom, who, of course, if you have played both of the previous Insomniac Spider-Man games, it is likely that the host of the Venom symbiote is in fact going to be Harry Osborn instead of Eddie Brock. And if you do happen to recall before Spider-Man PS4 even released, is that only Peter and Mary Jane were confirmed to be playable. And what ended up happening is that Miles was the third playable character within the game which Insomniac had kept secret. So in the case for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, even though I would obviously also love to see Venom as a fully playable villain just like we had in Ultimate Spider-Man, I actually think it would be a very intriguing opportunity if we had the ability to play as both Peter and Miles either in or out of the Spider-Man suit and instead of playing as Mary Jane again for a second time within the sequel, have Harry be the third playable character. So good. If this were to happen, it would allow us to experience a viewpoint that we have never really seen before within Insomniac Spider-Man games by really being able to dive headfirst into the mindset or at least the point of view of the antagonist at hand. And even though Harry Osborn is clearly not an evil person by any means, since we do learn a lot about his character within the first game, and since he is directly Peter Parker's best friend, he obviously has the direct influence of the symbiote affecting his health, which of course may end up affecting his personality at the same time, and inevitably turn him into Venom. So just like how we saw the origin of Dr. Octopus within Spider-Man PS4, it is going to be very interesting to see exactly exactly how this version of Venom is quote-unquote born within Marvel's Spider-Man 2. 
And if we are able to get more of a direct insight as to how that is going to work by playing as Harry in certain sequences of the game, I think that would add a whole nother level of detail for Marvel Spider-Man 2, which could elevate the story to even greater heights. So going back into uh, interchange between both Peter Parker and Miles Morales Spider-Man, I've noticed in the first game, we had sequences where we had to play a mission regarding, you know, Mary Jane Watson or Miles Morales. Now, I want to say, and I think this is really well known in my community, when people watch my live streams playing Marvel Spider-Man, that I am not a huge fan of the Mary Jane sequences. Like, I just, like, I just clench up every time I know the Mary Jane sequences are coming when I'm replaying Marvel Spider-Man on my live streams, or I'm just playing recorded game footage or whatnot. It's just like, oh, here we go. We're gonna be playing as Mary Jane again. And I try to like skim through them as fast as possible so I can get to the good stuff, which is replaying as Spider-Man. So I was thinking in the sequel, in its place, we can have more Peter Parker, Miles Morales sequences instead that requires you to be Peter Parker, not necessarily Spider-Man and vice versa, the same with Miles Morales. I understand that Peter Parker and Miles Morales have a circle of friends and family and that maybe it might be interesting uh, to play as those characters. And it does sound good on paper, but honestly, it's just completely redundant at this point. So this is something that I don't wish to happen or to return at any point in Marvel Spider-Man 2, even though the game is great and those missions are quite overshadowed by the entire game anyways. And with all that said, everyone, that's the video that we have for you today. And please let us know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about all the ideas that Ronnie and I came up with for Marvel Spider-Man 2 pertaining to Peter and Miles, as well as their stories and gameplay being expanded upon from the previous games? And which particular element would you like to see Insomniac incorporate the most? Feel free to leave a like on the video and and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy and for more amazing Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos like this in the future. And please go and support News to Astonish as much as you can on all of his awesome social channels. Thank you once again for having me here, Evan. It's been a blast. Always a good time to collaborate with you in one of these videos. And thank you to all of you who are watching this video right now. Be sure to support Evan, subscribe to him, of course, like the video. And with all that being said, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next comic panel. Until next time, true believers, stay spectacular, Spidey fans, and peace out.